On the afternoon of July 10, 2017, gentle golden sunlight bathed the bustling Boon Tat Street, one of Singapore's busiest commercial districts. The steady flow of people blended into the city's hectic rhythm. This peaceful yet vibrant atmosphere was suddenly shattered by an agonizing scream, causing the crowd to startle and turn anxiously toward the source of the sound. Outside a cafe, a young man stumbled out, clutching a bleeding wound in his abdomen. Before he could call for help, a man in his 60s wearing a white shirt emerged from behind, still gripping the gleaming knife, pursuing him. Faced with this sudden outbreak of violence, the terrified crowd backed away, no one daring to intervene. The elderly man suddenly shouted at those who tried to approach, Don't touch him! He deserves to die, and I'm ready to go to jail! With those words, more knife blows rained down on the now weakening young man. The horrifying scene threw the street into chaos. Children's screams and women's frightened shrieks mingled with the victim's painful groans as he lay writhing on the sidewalk. While people frantically called the police, the perpetrator, with a cold expression, also pulled out his phone and calmly reported his crime to the police, requesting them to come to the scene. He then stood there watching the young man struggle on the ground until he became motionless. Strangely, a smile seemed to appear on the old man's face. For a moment, the crowd thought this elderly man might be mentally ill. The piercing sirens of police cars and ambulances broke through the suffocating atmosphere. But all rescue efforts were too late. The man died from excessive blood loss. What was the relationship between the elderly man and the deceased? And what deep-seated hatred could drive the old man to such savage actions? At the Singapore police station, information about the perpetrator quickly emerged, shocking the public. The violent elderly man wasn't mentally ill, as people had speculated, but was Tan Nam Seng, a prominent figure in Singapore's business community. At 70, he was the founder of a renowned traditional shipping company, a true tycoon in the industry with considerable wealth. Even more surprising was the relationship between the perpetrator and the victim. Spencer Tapani, the unfortunate man, wasn't a stranger but was Tan's eldest daughter's husband and the CEO of his father-in-law's shipping company. He was a successful businessman, regularly praised by local business magazines as a symbol of Singapore's elite class. The case of a millionaire father-in-law killing his son-in-law in broad daylight quickly dominated Singapore's headlines. However, as layers of truth were unveiled, both the case developments and public reaction took an unexpected turn. The big question was, what drove a successful businessman, a person once widely respected like Tan, to choose such a bloody resolution? During interrogation, Tan insisted this was an act of revenge, not for money or power, but for his daughter's pain. What were the deep-rooted causes that transformed family bonds into an irredeemable tragedy? From a 10-year-old immigrant child in Singapore, Tan had built his empire from scratch. Starting as a dock worker, with his intelligence and business acumen, he quickly recognized the potential of the shipping industry in Singapore. At 29, with saved and borrowed money, he established TNS Shipping during Singapore's maritime golden age. Through hard work and business insight, his empire steadily grew, expanding into real estate and entertainment making him one of Singapore's notable millionaires. However, at the peak of his career, his wife passed away, leaving him with three daughters. Nevertheless, Tan resolutely carried both father and mother roles. He didn't remarry, but devoted all his love and material resources to his children while managing his business. This boundless love for his children would explain his extreme actions later. For his business empire, Tan placed great hopes in passing it on to his children. Among his three daughters, he most highly regarded his eldest, Tan Cheng Cheng. Not only excellent in academics, she proved her practical capabilities by starting from an entry-level position in her father's company, gradually rising to management through numerous challenges and impressive achievements. This further strengthened the father's faith in his eldest daughter. However, besides passing on his legacy, Tan had another concern his daughter's marital happiness. Chung was so focused on her career that she didn't notice her youth slipping away, suddenly finding herself past 30 and still single. 
In Mr. Tan's opinion, his daughter will sooner or later get married and have her own family. Therefore, he often cares about and asks about his daughter's situation, and also tries to introduce her to some rich children or successful people around. However, Chung always showed indifference to these introductions and arranged meetings. Initially, Tan didn't understand why, until during a company meeting, he learned from employees that Chung was secretly dating someone who worked right in their shipping company. Out of love for his daughter, Tan immediately went to HR to check information about this man. He wanted to see what kind of person could attract his daughter, as she had never been in a relationship before. This was a natural reaction for any parent wanting to ensure their child's partner was worthy of their trust and love. The information gathered left Tan in deep contemplation. Spencer Tapani, the man who had won his daughter's heart, was just a regular marketing employee under Chung's supervision. It was this superior-subordinate relationship that gave them more opportunities to meet and grow close, eventually developing romantic feelings. What worried Tan wasn't just the man's status or character. Spencer was five years younger than his daughter, had been previously married, and had a child from that marriage. His family background also concerned Tan. He still lived with his parents in public housing, accommodation for Singapore's lower middle class. The social status and living conditions gap between the two families was too large for the wealthy father to not worry about his daughter's future. Spencer's humble background made him an unlikely match. Even ordinary families would hesitate to accept such conditions for their son-in-law, let alone a wealthy family like the Tans. Yet Cheng, raised in luxury, was adamant about choosing him as her life partner. This choice wasn't without reason. In Cheng's eyes, Spencer possessed the rare attractive features of someone of Chinese-Indian descent. Standing at six feet one inch with a muscular build, he exuded strong masculinity. The five-year age gap made Spencer appear even more vibrant and appealing to the older woman. Being inexperienced in matters of the heart, Chung easily fell for Spencer's sweet words. A man who had been through marriage and knew how to win a woman's heart. Before this intense love, she believed she had found her destiny, completely losing her ability to judge clearly. Their relationship progressed rapidly, despite Tan's opposition. With his life experience, he couldn't accept his beloved daughter marrying a man who was not only poor, but also carried the burden of a failed marriage and a child from a previous relationship. But all the father's advice fell on deaf ears. His daughter's heart was already completely given to Spencer. For the daughter he had pampered since childhood, Tan could only maintain the complex feelings of a helpless elderly father. Soon after, Chung decided to marry Spencer. Tan, seeing things had reached this point, decided it was better to comply with his daughter's wishes and support the young couple. He quickly adjusted his mindset as a father and took a positive attitude toward his daughter's marriage. Unable to bear seeing his daughter suffer, he gifted the couple a luxurious villa as a wedding present and spent a large sum to organize an extravagant wedding. To outsiders, it seemed like a modern fairy tale, where a rich man's daughter and a poor young man found happiness together, blessed by a benevolent father. After marriage, Tan promoted Spencer to department head, while Chung gave birth to three children in quick succession. Although they had hired help to care for the children, Chung no longer had time for work. After such an extended break, she lost interest in returning to work. Meanwhile, Spencer received continuous promotions. Beyond being the chairman's son-in-law, Spencer himself worked very hard. This provided some consolation to Tan. His daughter devoted all her energy to caring for the family. A perfect little family was gradually built, husband managing work, wife tending to the home. Everything seemed like a perfect picture of happiness. But beneath this perfect exterior, hidden changes were quietly taking place. In some hearts, ambitions were growing like weeds in a beautiful garden. Spencer, the eldest son born into poverty carrying his family's expectations, had made a remarkable leap in social status through his marriage to Chung. From a cramped public housing apartment, he stepped into a world of luxury villas, expensive cars, and corporate power. Having acquired all this, Spencer began generously repaying his biological family, showing filial piety to his parents and relatives. 
these actions initially seemed blameless. Helping family when one achieves better financial conditions is commendable. However, in the process of showing affection for his biological family, Spencer seemed to forget about Chung's feelings. Most notably, he unilaterally moved his parents and younger brother in to live with them without discussing it with his wife first. Spencer made the decision then explained to his wife that the villa was spacious enough for everyone, even using the excuse that his parents could help look after the grandchildren. Put in this fait accompli situation, as a daughter-in-law, Chung couldn't voice any objection, much less suggest his parents live separately. Spencer's influence in the company grew increasingly powerful as he rose to become second only to Tan. With Tan Chung Chung as his trump card, Spencer confidently placed his relatives in various company positions under different pretexts. All internal company decisions now fell under his management. Though aware of Tan's silent disapproval, Spencer deliberately pushed the boundaries with his father-in-law. In his mind, he had already envisioned a scenario. As long as he didn't cross certain lines, this empire would eventually fall into his hands. On this point, Spencer had accurately read both Tan's and his daughter's psychology. Tan understood that his daughter had devoted all her energy to caring for the grandchildren, leaving no time for work. His vast business empire needed a reliable successor. With health issues and no son, delegating authority to his son-in-law seemed like an inevitable choice for Tan. Spencer also showed good management skills, forcing him to follow the philosophy of keeping the big things, ignoring the small things, turning a blind eye to his son-in-law's petty actions to maintain the overall stability of the family and the company. Tan's gradual concessions silently wove together a tragic future that he couldn't have foreseen. Looking back, every catastrophe accumulated from small daily changes. Tan Cheng Chung entered marriage at a later age, making pregnancy and childbirth extremely difficult. Severe pregnancy symptoms left her exhausted. Seizing this opportunity, Spencer skillfully persuaded his wife to focus on family care while he would handle company matters. Thus, the valuable business relationships that Tan Cheng Chung had built over many years gradually transferred into Spencer's hands. Occasionally, Tan still tried to persuade his daughter to return to the company as deep down he hoped his empire's heir would be his own flesh and blood. However, Chung sincerely shared with her father that she wanted to dedicate her time to family and their three children, just as he had cared for her and her sisters years ago. Hearing these words from his daughter, Tan had to accept and respect Chung's decision. He told himself that if his daughter trusted Spencer so much, then treating his son-in-law like his own son wasn't unreasonable. As long as the couple lived happily and peacefully, handing the company over to his son-in-law seemed like a logical choice. By 2015, as his health began declining, Tan had to think about the company's future. He called his second daughter, who was developing her career elsewhere, to return, hoping she could quickly familiarize herself with the family business. However, soon after, successive revelations plunged Tan Nam Seng into ultimate despair. The first shock came from his second daughter. One day, she frantically approached her father, recounting how Spencer had expelled her from the company and revoked her access card. The deep-rooted cause stemmed from her discovery that Spencer's assistant was posting defamatory information about Tan Cheng Cheng on social media, alleging she had mental health issues. When she stood up to defend her sister and got into a heated argument with the assistant, Spencer chose to side with his assistant rather than his sister-in-law. The tragedy didn't end there. In the months following the second daughter's return, Spencer conducted a great purge, firing numerous long-term employees and replacing them with his own relatives. Facing these actions, Tan felt both angry and deeply worried about his eldest daughter's fate. During one meeting with her father, tears suddenly broke through Chung's facade of happiness. The fears that had eaten away at the father's heart finally became a painful reality something Tan had always tried to deny, but silently dreaded. Through tears, the painful truth about Chung and Spencer's marriage gradually emerged. Their marriage had been broken for a long time. Six months earlier, a close friend had sent Chung a screenshot from social media, a photo that shattered all her illusions about family happiness. 
The photo captured Spencer and an unfamiliar woman intimately together, celebrating the birthday of a child who appeared to be about one year old. The caption, Happy Family, beneath the photo was like a knife straight to the heart of the pregnant wife. Scenes from recent years flashed before her eyes. Spencer's nights of alleged client entertainment extended over time hours and days when he didn't come home. Yet, the wife's heart stubbornly refused to believe that the man who had once sworn eternal love could betray her so cruelly. In desperation, Chung hired private investigators to follow Spencer, and the truth revealed was even more painful than she had imagined. The darkest moment in Chung's life was witnessing a child running excitedly toward him, calling him Papa. While she had been foolishly waiting at home trusting him, he had been having an affair, secretly building another family and even having a child out of wedlock. Afterward, she confronted Spencer directly with evidence of the affair and threatened to tell her father. At this point, the man's attitude immediately changed. Since he hadn't yet secured his grip on the company, if the matter was exposed at this time, all his previous efforts would become worthless and he would lose his current luxurious lifestyle. Therefore, Spencer knelt down, crying pitifully, begging his wife for forgiveness. He blamed everything on his mistress, claiming he had been seduced and never expected her to become pregnant and have the child. This act of begging for forgiveness had only one purpose, to paint himself as an innocent victim and push all responsibility onto the other woman. Spencer even wrote a commitment letter, swearing to cut all ties with his mistress. These seemingly sincere promises were just as empty and false as his past vows of eternal love. This tactic proved effective with Ching, a woman inexperienced in matters of the heart. Moreover, thinking of their three children they had raised together, Chung, with her soft heart, decided to give Spencer a chance to reform. In 2015, the news of a fourth child came to Chung like a twist of fate. She naively believed this tiny new life would be the connecting thread, mending their fractured marriage. But it was a painful illusion. If a man could betray his family despite having three children, how could a fourth child change him? The breaking point came when Chung discovered Spencer had not just one but multiple mistresses. In desperation, she proposed divorce, but this is when Spencer's true face was fully revealed. When they couldn't reach an agreement about assets, this man showed ultimate cruelty. He not only wanted Chung to leave empty-handed but was determined to gain custody of the children, as if wanting to strip away everything most sacred from the wife who had dedicated her entire life to him. During her sensitive pregnancy period, Chung's already fragile emotional state became even more volatile. Spencer recognized this weakness and devised a cruel plan to turn his wife's pain into a weapon against her. He deliberately provoked and instigated Chung's anger while secretly installing recording devices in their room. Every moment of Chung losing her composure, every outburst of anger from being betrayed and hurt was recorded with purpose. Spencer collected these videos and sent them to mental health facilities for evaluation, aiming to build a case proving his wife had mental health issues. This would be a double-edged sword in the divorce proceedings, not only taking away her custody rights, but also destroying Chung's reputation. After hearing the accusations from his two daughters, Tan Nam Seng realized this was just the tip of the iceberg. A premonition of greater danger prompted him to immediately order a comprehensive financial audit of the company. The investigation results were exactly as he had suspected. Spencer had built an entire system of shell companies to embezzle enormous sums from corporate funds. The asset verification process also revealed that he had secretly accumulated multiple properties, including the house he used to hide his life with his second family, which Chung had discovered. Each revealed clue showed Spencer's conspiracy more clearly. Not only did he deceive her feelings, he also had the ambition to seize all of the Tan family's assets. Looking at his daughter's haggard face, the rage in Tan's heart burned like a raging fire, his teeth grinding. The empire he had spent his life building was being gradually usurped, his beloved daughter cruelly betrayed. These pains had exceeded the elderly father's limits of endurance. At this point, the only path forward was to convince Chung to quickly divorce the unfaithful man. But the problem was that Spencer adamantly refused to accept the divorce. He even performed an act before Tan, crying miserably, swearing to repent, promising to change. 
those fake tears only fueled the flames of hatred in the heart of a father who had seen through his son-in-law's true nature. The wounds Spencer had inflicted on the Tan family were too deep to heal. Beyond the infidelity, the embezzlement of company funds to support his secret family, and his scheme to seize his father-in-law's assets, had crossed the final line of tolerance. Chung, though heartbroken, remained resolute in pursuing divorce. When Spencer realized he could no longer maintain his grip, his evil nature fully emerged. He not only fabricated evidence about Chung's mental state to gain custody of the children, but also shamelessly demanded asset division with the unconscionable argument that, while Chung was at home having children, he was the one who had shouldered the company's responsibilities, so he naturally deserved an equivalent share. Spencer completely forgot how he had been given such opportunities in the first place. He claimed that Chung had sacrificed her career to entrust everything to him. In reality, since joining the Tan family, Spencer had enjoyed preferential treatment far exceeding other managers, generous annual salaries and bonuses, not to mention the funds he had misappropriated. Yet Spencer's greed knew no bounds. The divorce proceedings dragged on like an endless battle, leaving deep scars on the entire family. Chung grew increasingly gaunt, her spirit crumbling under the pressure of legal battles and psychological attacks from her betraying husband. Meanwhile, the company fell into a crisis of capital turnover. Everything seemed to have fallen into an inextricable mess. During this time, Tan Nam Seng was in excruciating pain, utterly desperate. He knew Spencer's ambitions would be difficult to satisfy, so peaceful negotiation might not be effective. In a moment of intense emotion, the flames of anger erupted in Tan Nam Seng's heart, and simultaneously, an extreme thought entered his mind. To kill Spencer to prevent future troubles, believing this was the only way his daughter could have a peaceful life. And so, around 1.20 p.m. on July 10, 2017, Spencer was drinking coffee at a cafe on Taylock Air Street when Mr. Tan happened to see him. Thinking about how his family had been destroyed by this cruel situation, he could no longer contain himself. The anger in his heart erupted, and Tan calmly picked up a fruit knife and walked towards Spencer. Upon seeing Tan Nam Seng, Spencer was startled and stammered, Father, 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 why are you here? Without a word, Tan stabbed him three times in the abdomen. Spencer clutched his bleeding wound and fled the store, running toward Boon Tat Street but Tan naturally had no intention of stopping, continuing to pursue him with the knife. Finally, Spencer collapsed in front of a restaurant. Lying on the ground, he weakly called for passersby to help, begging his father-in-law to spare him. However, anyone who tried to step forward was sternly stopped by Tan Nam Seng. He shouted to those present, This man is my son-in-law, he's a bastard. Today I will definitely kill him. Even if I go to jail, I'll accept it. Spencer finally lost consciousness and lay in a pool of blood. At this point, Tan calmly put down the knife. Then, he called his eldest daughter, speaking with complete composure. Chung Chung, father has killed that bastard. On the other end of the line came Tan Chung Chung's painful crying. Father, why did you do this? Tan Nam Seng, as if a burden had been lifted, calmly replied. Father couldn't sleep. Father has done it. Father killed him. Don't cry. Father is old. Father isn't afraid of going to jail. After hanging up, Tan calmly sat down and remained at the scene until the police arrived and arrested him. Spencer later died from excessive blood loss. The incident of Tan Nam Seng committing murder on the street that day shocked public opinion. Initially, people still fought to defend Spencer, but as the police investigation deepened, the bloody family drama behind the case gradually came to light before everyone's eyes. Only then did they realize he didn't deserve their sympathy. On August 20, 2020, Tan Nam Seng's trial took place. Initially charged with intentional murder, after being diagnosed by doctors at the Institute of Mental Health as suffering from severe depression at the time of the crime, the final charge was reduced to manslaughter. Finally, on September 21, 2020, Tan Nam Seng was sentenced to 8.5 years in prison. One can understand that Tan Nam Seng was a father who wanted revenge for his daughter out of love, but nevertheless, 
He shouldn't have chosen such an extreme path that violated the law. After Spencer's death, his mother even demanded Chung pay $500,000 in support money. But Chung responded, If Spencer and I hadn't married, he wouldn't have enjoyed this life. His entire family worked at my father's company, and I can't imagine what Spencer would have given them. Spencer had changed his fate through marriage and easily obtained wealth and power that would have been otherwise unattainable. Only then did he gradually reveal his true, despicable nature. As for Cheng, she thought she had found true love. Later, it was proven that she had very poor judgment in people. When choosing a partner, besides looking at appearance, height, family background, and education, character is also very important. And this character can only be revealed over time. Compared to a marriage that must last for decades, spending more time getting to know your other half is actually very worthwhile. What do you think about today's case? Please share it in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.